starting to clean everywhere, including no-go zones. Hey guys, it's Zachary from How I Zone and today we're going to talk about the Samsung JetBot Plus Robot Vacuum Cleaner whom I have decided to call Mrs. Roboto. Samsung sells two versions of this, JetBot and JetBot Plus. Both base uh, robot vacuum cleaners are exactly the same. The only difference is on the JetBot Plus, you get a larger docking station that's called the Clean Station. It, Essentially, it's a docking station that has a built-in dustbin. So when the JetBot docks, it's able to suck out all the dirt from the robot vacuum cleaner and into the base station. And what this does is it basically just gives you more time in between having to clean uh, or to empty the bin between cycles. Now, what's interesting here is that the JetBot itself has a bagless vacuum system which most modern vacuum cleaners use because it's, it's just more hygienic, it's more efficient, you can take the whole thing out, you know, wash it, put it back in. The clean station actually has a dust bag so I'm guessing when that fills up you're gonna have to throw that bag away and replace the bag. You know Samsung even gives you an additional bag in the packaging. So my question is why? Why doesn't the clean station also have a sort of you know bagless container where you know once it fills up I can just dump it, wash it and put it back in? Let's talk about the machine itself. Mrs. Roboto here comes with a LiDAR sensor and that stands for light detection and raging. <laughs> rage clean 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 <sighs> sorry about that that stands for light detection and ranging that's that's what it uses to scan your room to create a, a, a map more precise than the previous technologies but it also does still have IR sensors to help it clean up straight. Ooh, you're straight. Mm. I'm actually very impressed with its performance because it's been cleaning my hall for the past couple of days and managed to get around areas with very good sort of situational awareness so that uh, places that it knows it can get under or get into you know height and width it will go with pretty good confidence and places it knows it can't, it will stop. It has this little like, bumpers in front to help uh, Mrs. Roboto here from hurting herself when she bumps into things. But she does bump into things quite a bit and I find that she does that in trying to get as far or as close into corners or edges as she can. And that's pretty cool. It's, it's not completely foolproof. We'll talk about more about that later. Now the front of the machine you have two very simple controls which is to start and stop a cleaning cycle and return to base button. Now obviously this is a Wi-Fi connected robot and you should connect it to the Samsung SmartThings app to get the most out of it. You know you, you can set up room maps, you can set up uh, no-go zones, you can, you can set up a scheduling timing for it to start and stop cleaning. You can, you can do everything you want. You can even change voices for it. So Mrs. Roboto here now has a female voice. If you like a male voice, you can if you want to. But assuming you don't have any of these and you know you just bought a robot vacuum cleaner, you technically can just put it in any room and start a cleaning cycle by pressing Starting a button. Starting to clean everywhere, including no-go zones. And it'll go. It has sensors, it has you know, you can do what it wants and do a pretty good job. But obviously you shouldn't do that. Pop open the hood and you've got the bin, right? This is what I'm talking about, this bagless bin. Um, it's a very small 0 0.3 litre bin. You've got a filter in here as well and that's where all the dirt goes now. As you can see, it's kind of clean. So I'm using the JetBot Plus, so I have the larger clean station docking station. 
and everything gets sucked into that after it. I've not cleaned this once, so I'm actually pretty impressed at how effectively the docking station sucks out all the dirt from the bin on the jetbot. But this thing entirely can be cleaned, even the filter. You can dump this in water, just clean it out so that it's a lot more hygienic. But that's what I'm talking about, right? I don't know why the clean station doesn't have a bin like this. Pop it back in and you're ready to go. Let's look at what's happening on the undercarriage. Please help me to stand up straight. Okay, Mrs. Roboto, I will. I will. After I show the nice people what you're made of. Okay? Anyway, Mrs. Roboto here is right-handed. She has one sweeping arm on this side. So everywhere she goes, it's, it's always rotated to this end where it sweeps up the dirt that goes into the rollers. So the roller itself is something Samsung calls a high efficiency brush with a built-in self-cleaning grinder. Now self-cleaning grinder is a, a sort of design mechanism that helps it pull hairs as so that it doesn't get tangled in the brush itself. And the high efficiency brush is something that makes it useful for both hard floors and carpet uh, cleaning, right? Now again, this is something that you can remove and wash, you know? I mean, obviously, even with all this design, eventually it will get dirty. So you can take the whole brush out and clean it as and when you want. But I'll show you in a more close up what this high efficiency sort of brush design is, right? Not sure if you can see, I pull it closer to the camera. Can you see this like sort of sparkly silver linings in, in the bristles itself that are anti-static silver threads. So it helps, you know, pull up dirt from places like carpets as well as cleaning hardwood floors. The next thing I want to talk about are Mrs. Roboto's wheels and she's got some thick wheels. Now these are high tension suspension springs. She's got these off-road you know, track wheels. It basically lets her go anywhere she wants to go. Now, I can't really remember like the height clearance of this thing, but so far she's been able to like mount anything that, that I've thrown in her way. And I'm talking about like this, you know, plastic uh, toddler play pen kind of area. She, she goes into it, starts cleaning around inside and pops back out without getting stuck. So in terms of getting around, pretty impressive. Now the only thing is, it's like an off-road vehicle, right? It, when, when you go into somewhere where it's uneven, you know, it sort of like bounces around a bit because it's trying to get across. I kind of question the cleaning efficiency there because it's not directly uh, level, but in terms of getting around and not getting stuck, it's doing a really good job at it. Speaking of not getting stuck, Mrs. Roboto here is actually pretty good at not falling over. This is good news if you stay in like a multi-story uh, apartment or home that it won't just roll off your steps and break itself. Of course, this doesn't mean you shouldn't set it up properly. You should, you know, connect it to the SmartThings app, map out your room, set up no-go zones. You know, you should do everything as much as you can to keep your vacuum cleaner safe. But on its own, it has pretty good uh, fall or ledge detection that, you know, so far it's not fallen off anything I've thrown at it. In fact, I can even show it to you here in this room. Now, if I take a tablet, let's see, where is, yeah. If you can see, Mrs. Roboto here is offline, right? Because it's connected at home, but it's not connected here. So I don't have a map. I haven't set anything up for this room. In fact, I haven't set anything up for this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start it with a manual clean on the body and let it roam around the table. You'll notice that it won't fall over. Starting to clean everywhere, including no-go zones. Finding the current location. That's the ledge.
Pretty cool, wasn't that? Now, as advanced as its sensors are, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's not foolproof. There have been two times I've had to rescue it. Um, once was my fault. Uh, I've left some wires around, so as it was going through, trying to navigate around the wires, it, it sort of got stuck in its wheel. And so, my bad. Sorry, Mrs. Roboto. But there was one time where it tried to go under a sort of shoe rack, and it sensed that it was low enough that it could go through, the body could go through, but not the LiDAR scanner. So, it's just because it protrudes up, right? So, it went below the shoe rack, hit the scanner, and then it tried to come back out, and then it tried to navigate itself in and out, in and out, in and out. I kind of left it there for about five minutes to see if it could untangle itself, and it felt like that scene from Austin Powers where it was trying to do a three-point turn in very narrow uh, sort of alley. And it didn't, so eventually I had to you know, pick it up and, and rescue it. But yeah, these situations are few and far between. Even though that's the case, I wouldn't recommend you to set this up to clean your place unattended. You know, unless you're really sure that you have made, you know, you have done some due diligence and removed your major obstacles, or else, you know, if it gets stuck, it might just you know, be moving around there until the battery dies. Lastly, let's talk about cleaning performance. Now, Mrs. Roboto here doesn't seem to have like a suction power rating that I could find, but it runs on a digital inverter motor, so it probably has pretty high RPM going on there. By default, it has this smart uh, power mode, so it can detect whether it's like on hardwood floors, on carpets, and adjust uh, suction power as necessary. I kind of feel that it works pretty well as far as I'm concerned. I don't really have that much experience with robot vacuum cleaners, but as far as a vacuum cleaner is concerned, you can tell the difference between a place that it has cleaned and a place that it hasn't. I've also corroborated this anecdotal evidence with members of my household. So yeah, I can say that Mrs. Roboto does a pretty good job at cleaning a room. You can also look at it's uh, sort of cleaning reports after it's done. For me, it takes about 30 minutes to clean uh, an average room. It uses about 20% of its power. So if it's fully charged, by the time it's finished one room, it's at about 79% power. And what I really noticed was that I'm not sure if this was part of its, its detection, its whole LiDAR thing, whether it can actually detect dust. Maybe it's that smart, maybe it's not, I don't know. But I've actually seen it go across the same area a few times. If, instead of just passing once, it sometimes go back to an area and it goes back and forth, back and forth a few times. So maybe it can detect dust and try to get rid of it. The Samsung JetBot goes for $799 Singapore dollars, while the JetBot Plus goes for $1,099. Now, would you pay $300 more for what is basically just a larger dustbin? I mean, it's that convenience of not having to clean or to clear the bin that often worth $300. For me, not really. I mean, this is completely washable. I can pop this up, you know, throw it, and you know dump it in water and make sure it's really clean and don't forget that the bin on the jetbot plus the, the 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 smart station what's it called clean station actually has a bag so eventually that's going to be an additional cost for you to replace that bag something to think of anyway that is what I think of the Samsung JetBot, JetBot Plus, Mrs. Roboto to me. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Like, subscribe, all that. Tell me what you think of it. Uh, comments down below. Bye. <laughs> you know, from this angle, this kind of looks like a toilet lid. <laughs> Mrs. Roboto says, put down the lid. <laughs> oh man, really going nuts. Hey guys, before you go, don't forget to check out hardwarezone.com. 
follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Join in the conversation, like and subscribe to our YouTube if you want to see more of these videos. Do it.